I have offered here is uh, pretty comprehensive uh, because it's one thing to know that about what the subconscious mind accepts and doesn't accept. It's quite another thing to learn that in conjunction with how the brain actually works. Uh, the more you understand uh, who and what uh, who and what you are, the better in it and the easier it will be to facilitate any reality shifts that you like to happen for yourself. Um, so that was, you know, the, the whole premise in uh, having you understand the brain, having you understand the reticular activating system, having you understand the states of consciousness and the specific okay. times that it's best to meditate, what a mantra actually is and is not, uh, offering some uh, uh, mantras that were poorly written. Uh, and if you can remember, as uh, Teresa went through them yet, uh, last week, she took the word not out. So if a person actually embraced that mantra, they would actually get the opposite of what they were intending to do or, or reality that they were intending to make. Also, the use of negative words. Uh, uh, some of us uh, will incorporate a mantra like I will, I want to be debt free. Um, the, the subconscious mind fixate on the word debt and you'll get more debt rather than not, you know, less debt. So uh, really understanding how the brain works, how the subconscious mind works the age of the subconscious mind and how sim you know, simplistic that the mantras should be, how personal they should be. And uh, also, as Bird stated, um, them being personal such that they won't be like a dinner eaten in a dream, meaning nothing to you when you say them. They should, you should also be able to elicit some type of emotion that's why they should be personal. So the whole thing about uh, this, uh, this entire um, path uh, that I'm taking you down um, is um, as instructor refers to us as uh, warriors of knowledge. Uh, as a warrior of knowledge, we study. <laughs> we don't, you don't really study because you need to. You study because you understand that the application of the knowledge is power. <laughs> uh, study cannot be taken away from you. Study uh, because you want to know more. And the, the more you do study, especially as it relates to yourself, the more powerful you become and the more you actually grow. So there are some, you know, some, some parameters uh, as to, uh, you know, what are the, uh, the characteristics of a, a, a warrior of knowledge. So could someone read those, um, the rest of this slide for me, please? Allowing a pessimistic ego to rule over the optimistic higher self. Don't study because you need to. Study because knowledge is power. Study because they can never take it away from you. Study because you want to know more. Study because it enhances you. Study because it grows you. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided the, world, the word of truth. Second Timothy two, uh, chapter two, verse 15. There is an approval process to gain access to the higher self. Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18 and three. Remember how old the subconscious is, seven years old, a child. 
And uh, that is referring to the reticular activating system. So I wanted to bring reference to that because it's not a spooky venture. So it's, it's actually referring to that part of, of your mind is what I was offering here. Thank you for that share. Bird, could you continue that please continue this? Who are you asking for instructor? Bird. Okay, my bad, I was on mute, okay. Did you know that we have at least 70,000 thoughts a day and most of those thoughts are negative, at least 70%. Most of the thoughts are self-talk and you're not aware of most of it. You don't even know that you're doing it. Okay, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, you know, we live, a lot of people are fueled up operating mainly in the beta state throughout the day, you know, and that's anxiety and anxiety is worries about the, what is, hasn't happened. You know, I tell people fears are always and anxiety are about what could happen. So it's a future uh, tense kind of a uh, thought. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I can see how this will occupy, occupy a lot of people's minds mm -hmm. in this uh, environment. And especially considering they don't know how to, uh, most people are meditating and learning about proper brain wave states and you know things of that nature. Mm. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bert. Anybody else on these uh, on these uh, on this on this particular slide? I think we claim a lot of stuff that we don't have to claim. Like people say, like I'm depressed or I'm this and or like I'm bipolar or like stuff like that. And you can have bipolar disorder, but that's not who you are. Or like you can have, like you could have a bout with depression, but that's not who you are. But like, it's kind of like how we've been raised to speak because if somebody growing up, you like that and they fall a lot, like the, your parents be like, oh, he's so clumsy, she's so clumsy. So you say, I'm so clumsy. And you like, that's what you, you grow attached to like what it is instead of acknowledging it away from yourself, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, man. Uh, because I hear people and I hear children especially say that about themselves and not, and are not even aware of what they're actually claiming because once you put I am in front of a statement, it becomes a declaration. <laughs> I am, then you, you know, you choose a word. Uh, you're actually making that a part of your, your mental framework rather than say that you embrace or you have some characteristics of, you know, that you, you have some behaviors that, you know, lend itself to that, but that's not who you are. So very well stated, Aisha. Thank you for that. Anybody else, especially that last statement, how can you, how can most of the self-talk you not even be aware of? How could that be? I don't know if I should say anything or not, but I know you're so shocked that I'm talking. Yes, I am. But but um, I was just thinking about my situation when you're when you when you're in a situation where you're sick, which I'm not sick anymore. But during the time that I was sick, if I would have accepted some of the things that the doctor was saying and saying and start ingesting that, then I would not be here today. So if I would have said I am sick, I have this, I have that, I wouldn't even say the word. And so that's why everybody's so it's so unbelievable that I, I, I'm looking like I look today or I'm not sick anymore because I would, I would not even allow the doctor to tell me that. When a doctor tried to tell me what was wrong, I told him it was not my business and just to tell me how we're going to fix it. And I think by thinking that way, it helped me become in the place I am today. But you know what, Denise, I think it's, it's, it's a powerful share a lot of people that are on, they don't know what you're talking about. 
So if you can explain a little bit of what you're talking about, uh, I think it's very significant to share what you're talking about. That wasn't a share, what I just said. You want me to go explain more? I want you to explain more. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the doctor, I went to the doctor because I was sick. I mean, I, I was rushed to the hospital and they gave me the worst news anybody could have ever had. Really the worst news you could think of. That's what they told me. Oh, that's what they were trying to tell me. But um, I wouldn't allow the doctor to tell me anything like that. I wouldn't let him tell me about stages. You know how they say, oh, you got stage so-and-so. You have this. You only have this long to live. I wouldn't allow him to even talk to me about it. Because if I would have allowed it, I would have. Oh, somebody's calling me. If I would have allowed it, I would have. Um, I would have bought into it and I wouldn't be here. Because what they said I had, I'm, they don't even understand why I'm here today. They can't get it. They, and then when they look at me, they are amazed. They can't even understand because I was 97 pounds. I wasn't supposed to be here. But since I didn't allow that negative talk and I didn't allow them to tell me to, to, to put a definition on it, I'm fine. Not until over almost two years later, when the doctor was going over my test results, he said, oh, it's no longer so-and-so. It's no longer here. It's no longer this thing. I'm like, wait a minute, what? I didn't know all this stuff. But had I known it, I would have been sicker. I would have thought I, I would, I would have thought I would, should have been sick. And I would have became exactly what I thought. Mm -hmm. I would have not been able to walk. I wouldn't have been able to do anything because that's exactly what they want me to. They, they, want, you to, they want you to be sick. It's to their benefit for you to be sick. And I decided not to be sick. Mm -hmm. I decided not to be sick and just like a click of a, the light because I, was, I had actually accepted I was sick until I turned around and my daughter was standing right there and I couldn't be sick anymore. So I haven't been sick since. Yeah. And the doctors don't understand how. But I understand it because it's, your thoughts are powerful. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Powerful, powerful share. Thank you. Anybody else? I would like to share. Um, yes. <clears throat> Is that my baby? Oh my God, please stop. So I think just to kind of um, talk a little bit about how you have these negative thoughts and you aren't aware of it. Um, initially, when I heard that being read, I didn't necessarily see how that could be true. But I think when, especially in this day and age, when you are on social media and you have all of these images that you see of these, you know, celebrities or people just living their best life if you're looking at that I think it's almost natural to instantly compare yourself to what you're seeing and if we're always looking um like on social media or on tv or wherever and you're constantly comparing yourself if you don't think you measure up in any way whether it be physical or you know financially or whatever I think that can be how we're, you know, talk, speaking negatively about ourselves or viewing ourselves in a negative light compared to others and not even realizing it. And that can just be scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah, yes. very powerful. That's what I was after. And for the record, everyone, that was my daughter, Jasmine. Uh, welcome. I'm glad y'all on while wow, y'all talking. For real. For and happy real. birthday. This is going to be your birthday gift. So happy birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my birthday gift. Yeah. It's a family affair. Happy birthday. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> is that your birth right day, bro? No. No. Oh, y'all joking. And she's tripping as she always does. <laughs> no, but that's that. I, I really um, understood what Jasmine was talking about because you can. You can get caught up in the media. You can get caught up in the images that you see on, on on the internet images you see on tv and you think wait wait a minute why how come my life is not like that right and then you start comparing yourself and you fall short every time and i've taught my kids that from the beginning never compare yourself to anyone because you're going to fall short because you never know what that person's story is you know i um i don't know why i'm talking so much but at work at my job 
people look at me and they think, oh, she got this, she have this, she's this, she's that, not knowing the entire story behind who I am. It's not, you know, looking at a person, you, you can't look at me and tell and, and know, this, know my history because I don't look like I should look. I don't look like my history. But some people, you know, we ha- as humans, we have a um, tendency of judging people just based on first impressions. And that's not always, that's not good. So I do agree with what Jasmine said. Oh, all right. All right. Thank you guys for sharing. Wow, it's a good, nice birthday gift. <laughs> Thank you, Queen, for sharing. Thank you. You're welcome. Who was that? John. Brother, Brother Rogers. Okay. I thought that was Keith. Okay. All right. So now these are some other things to remember. And some of these have uh, already been stated. So the subconscious mind is seven years old. The mantra should be simple enough for a seven-year-old to understand. You should avoid the use of negative words, as we've already stated, negative words in our phrases. And routine and structure is crucial. The mind craves that, uh, that type of structure. The mantra should be consistent um, uh, and don't change it. The time should also be consistent. Believing your truth, any doubt in your truth will act as an erosive element. So let me state that again, and I'm gonna ask someone what's meant by that. Believing your truth, any doubt in your truth will act as an erosive element. I'm gonna stop right there. What do I mean? By that, what is what is meant by that? Can I speak on that instructor? Yes, you can, sir. Thank you. It's basically like um, I recently went through a little situation. My mother was really sick. Um, she had fell into a slight short coma or whatever, and um, I went into my mind. So when you saying like eroding, like I had all these theories of what could, what could be, and this, that, and the other, because the doctor hadn't called me back and blah, blah, blah. So I hit the instructor Keith up, and he was like, it's the best time to practice. Meditate. You know, you owe me some practices, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, you're right. So because I was in my mind, and if you think about something long enough, you would have, could have, should have, it'll eat at you. It'll eat road like, like, like water. It, it'll slowly build. And at some point, you might you can even cause yourself to have a stroke or heart attack because your anxiety that you don't put in your mind, it's not even real yet. It's not even happening. It's just a thought about what maybe, what could. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's really deep because like she said, she thought about her making it through. She thought about her not, not hearing nothing they said. Had she thought the other way, it would have been different. Oh, yeah. It would have been very different. So. So you can't, you sometimes you can't feed into your own self because like you said, it erodes because some thoughts you should just get rid of. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It, you only hold on to what you really need and you keep going. Mm. And that's what, mm. that's what really helped me because when she finally woke up and everything and called me and was cracking jokes, it was like, okay. But then, you know, when I hit Instructor Keith, it was like, of course, I know that, duh. So it's, it was all in my mind, even though mm. it didn't look good at the time. It was, you know, it was just situational, you know, and situations change. And that's why you can't be permanent on how you feel about something, because that might not even be the case. And if you stay in your mm. mind and stay in your thoughts and stay on that point too long, <clears throat> you can start to uh, actually, you know, eat away at yourself, basically. Oh, wow. Can I add to that? You, Let me add to yes. that really quick, just before I forget. And then, then I'm getting off the call because I don't want to keep talking. But just like you just said, um, the thought that you had about your mom in the beginning, you have to understand with me in the beginning, I had so much fear. I had so much fear because I knew something was wrong with me. And the fear kept, the, you know, because fear is not real. That's Those are just thoughts that you have of what might happen. Just like you said, you start putting all these things in your head 
And when I, when my, I kept going down further and further in weight, I got down to 97 pounds and I still was trying in my head, I was still trying to say I'm fine until my husband and kids was about to do an intervention because they, I couldn't hardly do anything. I couldn't walk, Be, but my fear kept me from going to the doctor. My fear kept me, it, my thoughts, those fearful thoughts kept me from growing and it could have killed me just by my, my thoughts could have killed me. It's just that I have to, once I got over the fear, over that and said, okay, whatever happens, happens. That's when I changed my thoughts because my thoughts are the ones that was killing me in the beginning because I was scared. I was, that was fear. And, your, and that's all fear is, are your negative thoughts. Mm. Mm. And yes, it's, uh, ma'am. yes, ma'am. Yeah, and it's very uh, powerful to even hear you say that uh, your thoughts were killing you. Uh, uh, that is a very powerful share because oftentimes it's what we put in our heads that actually uh, uh, lend itself to uh, doing away, you know, we're erosive or we're more dangerous to ourselves, especially when we entertain those fears. So yes, you are, uh, as a powerful sharing. Thank you for sharing that. It's, uh, man, that's something. Thank you. Wow. And to um, the um, emotion about um, what it is that you feel. And I think uh, you alluded to this, John, and um, uh, Denise, uh, if you could share more before you get off, if you're still on. I'm still on. Uh, uh, emotions that you, that you associate with a condition and where the subconscious mind can feed on it. Uh, I think John, you alluded to this because you said, you know, you were feeling a certain kind of way about this, you know, you, you know, your mom's condition. Uh, and again, that creates, I think talked about earlier in this presentation, how emotions creates, they create files in your brain where the subconscious mind can actually feed on it and have access to it. So I, I was asking Denise, if you could share the emotions that you had associated with your illness and these uh, 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 emotional roller coasters and how you were able to delete a file and replace it with another file. I only think I could, when you say that, it made me think of the situation when, when I, um, Jasmine's what, 33 now, when I was pregnant with her, the doctor told me, oh, you may get cancer, but it'd be years down the line because of something was going on. He was like, you, that may come back as cancer one day. So in my head, 33 years ago, when he put that in my head, I just automatically assumed that that was going to happen because he put that thought in my head. So I didn't think about it every day. I didn't think I did, but subconsciously I did think about that every day. So in my head, and I truly believe, I brought that to me because I believe that was supposed to happen. Mm. I, the, the, the kind of cancer I, I got, I, I had or whatever. I really still don't believe I had it. I'm sorry, I just don't. But the kind they said I had is just like I thought, I thought it would be. You know, I thought that's what I would get when I, when I turned a certain age. And it, it, it was inevitable because my thoughts brought me there. My, I had to thought first. You have to think about it before it can actually happen. And, and it actually happened because I, it wasn't like I was a psychic. I brought it to myself. Mm -hmm. But once I brought it to me and I realized, I sat back one day and realized like, dang, you actually still thinking about this. And I had to change my, the whole, I had to do an entire paradigm shift and start thinking about things differently. And once I did that and I decided and I was 100% dissatisfied with both the thoughts that I was having, that's when things changed. That's when I started seeing a change. That's when, you know, we all just start, we start being on the same page. Everybody in the family, we start being on the same page. We start concentrating on the, on the same issue. We wouldn't allow any negative thoughts or any negative talk in the house. And when you talked about it, you talked about it in a positive way. And I think that's what happened. It shifted, it was a paradigm shift and I was able to, 
overcome it from just that, just changing my thoughts, just shifting my way I looked at it. The lady at um, a friend of mine told me, you know, when she found out I had to have chemotherapy, she was like, well, Denise, look at the chemo as beauty treatment. Look at, cause you know, she played to my ego, which is a beat, it's pretty big. And she was like, look at, <laughs> I'm being honest. She was like, look at, um, look at it as a beauty treatment. So in my head, every time the chemotherapy went through my vein, it was like, oh, this, that means I'm gonna have new skin. Oh, that means I'm gonna have new hair. That means I'm gonna have a new body. And when I did that, what, what the results was amazing. People couldn't understand. I had all those things, everything that I thought about and said I was gonna have, it happened. So people, some people don't even believe it happened because they can't believe they never seen it before. But it's all about the way I thought about it. I didn't think about it in a negative way. I just thought about it like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. This is what this I'm doing this for a reason. I just God just haven't revealed the reason yet. And so when I thought about it in a positive way, I obviously positive results. And it happened. I wouldn't want to wish this on anybody else, but it's a blessing to me that it happened to me. And I know that sounds crazy, but I look at it like I look at it that way. Because with me going through this, it has helped so many different people. Mm. Now, you're not crazy, sister. You're powerful. <laughs> Thanks. And I think you are continuing to help people in your share. Yeah. yeah. I've had so. people reach out to me that I don't even know. Like, you're the reason I got up because I know it can happen. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Um, could someone read this for me, please? I got an instruction. Yes, please. <clears throat> Avoid overloading. It is better to saturate the subconscious with a few good mantras than overload with different ones. Be specific. Avoid generalization. State affirmations aloud. Be committed to the development of seeding your mind with good seeds of thoughts as in, in, in volation. Is that what it is? Involution. Involution. Mm -hmm. Remember, it is so simple that most people will come complicate the process. This is a process and it will take discipline on your part. Yes. And uh, just like the offer, thanks John for reading that. Uh, just like the offer uh, on Denise's share about how deliberate we were with regard to the avoidance of using negative words. We were very intentional about what we said to her, how we said it to her, and even how what, what and how we spoke to each other about uh, her condition. Uh, uh, so we were very, it, it, it took some discipline on all of our parts to negate what you saw in front of you and hold on to the vision of what you wanted to see in uh, or what you saw in your mind. So we all shifted our thought processes to what, how we saw her in our minds. So we saw her differently than what she was depicting physically. So it, it took discipline on all of our parts. We were committed to um, putting these seeds out there and we were very much involved in that process. So that's where, you, you know, that was an example of that involution. We were all very much involved in the process as well as she was involved in the process of creating and shifting uh, the, the paradigm. Uh, yeah, that was, that was what we, that's what we did. 
A anyone else want to share? Please share. I think um, sometimes we need to watch what we're uh, looking at on Facebook, on television, and repeating things that um, that are uh, on there, like uh, before when they was holding up the signs that said, I can't breathe. Um, and people were just repeating that, chanting that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in, in the in, in the protest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I would like to add, uh, touch on touch on that. Um, I remember uh, I was talking to a friend, um, and he was talking about the the, the whole chant. I can't breathe. And basically, what boss keeps, you know, shout, shouting, I can't breathe. We keeping that energy alive because it's, it's thousands of people in that protest that's ch chanting that I can't breathe. So basically what he was telling me is like, all you know, all these millions of people saying I can't breathe. We basically just keeping that energy circling and it's going to continue a negative energy of, you know, people dying <clears throat> from police brutality. Basically, what um, the, the guy who I was talking to was um, was getting that, and I just thought that was deep. So I tried to, um, I mean, <clears throat> not try, but I attempted to stop saying I can't breathe during like protests or anything um, involved in that in that matter. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you on that, brother. I was just having a conversation with uh, my Mason brother the other day about the energy because he's a uh, he's a he's a sheriff down here in Fulton County. He's actually the uh, the director, and he was saying that when people um, build their energy up against certain things, and it keeps building until it explodes. So with that chant, with the Black Lives Matter, all, all of this, uh, people getting rapidly. Uh, murder and on camera and they showing it on the news repeatedly repeatedly it's on Facebook it's on Instagram all of that is really building the tension and I think that it could really be de-escalated de if they they just stop it's not hard to just look at a situation and be like okay we this don't need to be escalated because most of this stuff is like over parking tickets or little stuff like cigarettes or Lucy's None of this is matter or worth anybody's life. None of this. None of this is worth anybody dying. And they want to divide. And you can't do that. Because if you're going to say this is this and this is that, Black Lives Matter, OK, then you're going to have people say all lives matter. And then you're going to have some people say, well, we don't care what the NIGGA say anyway. And then you're going to have Klan, you're going to have this. All these different groups, they've been around for years. But it's just being perpetuated on in the like a mantra on TV, on internet, and it's been broadcasted really hard. And I, I totally agree with you. I think it's it, it's building energy. It's not the right kind either. Mm. Yeah, that's the Wow. Good share. Thank you. Anybody else? A good share. Kim it. Um, uh, so I'm not sure if this is irrelevant, but to me it correlates. Um, so I, as listening to Sister Denise, uh, it brought up for me. So I went and had a Yoni scene for my birthday, and I was talking to the lady that did the um, did the scene for me, and she was speaking on how situations can also manifest certain things. And to me, it all correlates like, um, she was saying like, a lot of times breast cancer is a manifestation of women um, not feeling love or lack of love in their life. And so that manifests 
to breast cancer because obviously that's where the heart chakra is. Um, and and that kind of reminded me of that brought back when Sister Denise was speaking on just her situation when she was pregnant and the doctor telling her like, hey, you know, later on down the line you might have cancer or you know that might come up for you. And then she thought about that for such a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And to me, it all flows together. Like you can, you can have a situation that happens to you or things happen or even like on TV, how we are always seeing people that look like us being killed. And to me, that's also being shown that, you know, they don't love us. They don't care about us. We're, we're, um, we're, they're superior over us, you know, and that also could be, you know, a thing where we think about that, that all the time and we can manifest things based on just by what we see or what we hear because now that becomes a control over our thoughts or we think about that all the time and then we don't know what we're doing to ourselves, the detriment that we're doing to ourselves. And it's just, um, I mean, it's amazing, but it's, it's also... Um, you know, it's like we a lot of people don't have access to what we're getting right now. So just imagine how much people are manifesting or going through or um, causing their self suffrage or, or, you know, bringing on health problems or things like that because they don't realize that they have these subconscious thoughts that's leading them based on what somebody else has told them or because of what happened to them. And it's just, it's just so it's sad and I'm I'm glad that I have been getting access to this now to break that down for me because now I'm I'm able to see how things um are are manifesting in my life that that is just that um is negative or have been negative in the past based on just those thoughts or those situations that I've been through and then taking that and and basically just going with it like that's what it is and um I'm I'm making it more than just letting it be like a letting it be a thing or you know that situation happened and I was over and I didn't cause all these manifestations of things that are now going wrong or not going right just by that that little thing and it's it's just crazy so that's what it, that that's what the shares have brought up for me. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else? Some this some these are some good shares. Very powerful. Bird, I think you were next. Yeah, great shares. I mean, this one right here talking about the power of words and the effect on the body. And uh, your wife Denise's uh, testimony, that's some, that's some moving stuff. It's real, you know. And so I just wanted to comment about the mantras, you know, uh, doubt seeping into the mantras. And I think the doubt comes from if you don't set, if you don't set realistic mantras, you know, you got to, each mantra is personal. We can all say the same mantra over and over, but we all take it differently. And so when you're creating these mantras for yourself, incorporate how you really are, not how you want to be and not how you used to be, but how you are right now. Mm -hmm. You know, my mantra, when I get in front of people, I don't tell myself I'm not going to be afraid because I'll be lying. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to tell myself I'm not anxious. I'm not nervous. I'm not going to tell myself I don't have an ego. What I'm going to tell myself is I'm going to deal with it because it's always worse in my head than it is on the floor. And that mm -hmm. gets me, that allows the doubt to be there and I deal with it, but it's still, it's still rooted in truth. And to me, that truth has to be scientific. You know, we can't, you know, we can't be looking for something nobody's ever seen. Everything we understand is based on experiences. So rooted in reality, let it be something true. You know, account your faults. Don't try to hide them. Don't let the ego come in and act like you don't have faults, like you're not, you don't have these feelings and you don't deal with this stuff, but just incorporate them into your mantras and they'll be more effective. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want to. I want to make a comment on that bird, but I want to let John go next. But uh, uh, after John goes, I want to make a comment about what you said there. John, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, bird, for sharing. Thank you. 
You want me to go next and say and say what? Instruct. No, no, go ahead, John, and then I'm gonna come back to what Bird shared. Well, I mean, I I really just completely agree with him. It's like it's hard, but it's easy at the same time. Like Komet said, uh, like like your wife said, you know, you gotta tune certain things out and not let certain things into your your mind, your 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 center, your your atmosphere. Like we got five TVs in my house, and I don't even watch TV, but my wife loves TV. And when, if, if if she's not here, they're not on. And when she's here, they're either on the Nature Channel or some some little dog show because she loves dogs. So at the same time, I don't let all those filters come in, you know, from the news, from the media. If I get on Facebook, it's, it's sharing some food I cooked that day because I'm a chef. But past that, I do a little bit and I come off of it mm. because whatever you feed will grow. Okay, yep, I, I, I agree. Um, now, let me share this. Um, and just like uh, Instructor Cedric said that in bringing together presentations like this, there's so much research that you run into, so many things that you are you stumble upon that it's like, man, should I put that in here? Should I not put that in here? You know. So what Bird shared made me think about what I had stumbled upon in. Um, the uh, uh, the sharing of uh, believing your truth and it being an erosive element that came from a body of research and things that I was uh, studying and researching and pulling this together. So uh, one person shared this, and you, I believe you all know this person, Will Smith. Will Smith shared this about mantras and affirmations. This is what he shared. He shared, um, he said, um, what you say to yourself in your mind's eye, it actually should take another version of yourself in order to realize it. So let me say that again. He said, what you actually say to yourself in your mind's eye, the current person that's actually saying it, which is you, that person won't be able to do what it is that you're saying. <laughs> he said it actually should take another version of yourself to be able to actually bring it into realization. So he said, so you should put things in your subconscious that are bigger than your current reality. <laughs> or, and then the reality is actually in quotes. Uh, so that almost bird challenges what you said. Uh, and uh, that's why I wanted to offer it there because your subconscious mind cannot distinguish what is true. It believes what you tell it. So whatever you are saying to yourself about any given situation, your subconscious mind accepts it as true. The erosive element is the self-doubt. If there are seeds of doubt about what you are confirming to that part of yourself, then it acts as an erosive element. And you're actually uh, making an affirmation, as you stated earlier, Bird, like dinner, 
even in a dream. Uh, so Will Smith actually offered a little bit opposite of what you said. Not completely opposite, but it, it, it shifts the paradigm or it, it shifts the playing field just a bit uh, to where uh, that's why when you are formulating a mantra, when you're thinking about a mantra, uh, what reality do you intend to create? And the reality should be such that it causes a, a transmutational shift in your being, right? There's a difference between transformation and transmutation. Transformation is akin to, let's say, a person going on a diet and they lose a uh, hundred pounds, but they don't think about they don't change the way they think about eating or food. They simply suppress those ideas that they have about eating and food. And once they lose the weight, they stop the diet, right? And return to the form, their former way of thinking. Then the form comes back, right? So that's a... a, a that's an example of a transformational change. A transmutational change is a mental construct that you embrace that shifts your way of thinking and you never return back to the old way of thinking. It actually changes the cells, the uh, DNA, it actually changes that to where you start to mutate and it brings about a totally different reality. I sent my wife a picture of us uh, maybe about, I don't know, it was about maybe 10, now about 15, 20 years ago. And she looked at the picture and she said, man, that person doesn't even exist anymore. Those people in that picture, they don't even exist. They're actually dead. <laughs> and, you know, and when she said that, I knew that she understood uh, the concept of mutational change. Because in fact, the people that she was looking at in the picture were very different people. <laughs> uh, it kind of challenges that a little bit, Bert. Can I uh, clear up my statement? Because you know, I want to make sure I have it right and I'm not trying to confuse anybody. I'm not trying to oh, confuse no, myself. Ahead, yeah. And so I guess what I was saying as far as the doubt why it worked, when I have mantras, all my mantras, are dealing with some antagonistic force, you know, whether it's external or internal. And so these, you know, these forces that I've, these antagonists I dealt with in the past, that's how I incorporate them to my, you know, when I'm dealing with stuff, I'm talking about my own, you know, my own personal fear, my own personal experiences, and I'm using those and, and creating mantras around those. So, you know, I, I have, I stay principled when I experience those emotions, whenever they arise or those feelings, whenever they arise, don't know if they're going to arise, but when they do, I have that to yes. uh you know to guide my so that was all i was trying to say about the doubt not so much that i believe that something's going to happen but like i said with my mantras i need they, they play the antagonist role my doubt yes yes sir I, I i understand thank you for clearing clearing that up because as you know bird um uh grandmaster challenges the way that we think about ourselves all the time all the time. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, <laughs> every yeah, second of the day. The Not sometimes, Bird. All the time. <laughs> you know, you go in thinking one thing about yourself, and after some interactions with him, he shifts everything that you thought about yourself at that time, and you never return to that behavior. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Uh, Instantly, yep. You, you, you never thought you could break, break a two inch plank and you going through it like it's nothing. You never think that you can shatter a, a, a concrete slab with your hand and you pop it in half without even thinking about it. Uh, these are some things that I never thought I would be able to do. Uh, I never even considered. And then after uh, sitting in a few sessions with him, that's exactly what I'm doing. And uh, you know what I'm saying? And I see other people doing it as well. And then getting other people to come into a realization of that as well. So he not only put that in me, uh, I am able to uh, uh, shift other people's thoughts about their, you know, about what they believe about themselves. So it is contagious <laughs> with it being done to you and then you turning around and doing that for somebody else. So it's a very powerful uh, concept and a construct. Uh, to say the least, because instructor, grandmaster does this to us all the time. I say, I say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Instructor Kimmy it, had her hand up. It, who, who, who had their hand up? I'm sorry, I didn't see. Kimmy, Kimmy, could you please share, please? Thank you, Instructor Aku. Um, actually, I am sharing on behalf of Paul. He sent me his sentiments, um, so I told him I will for him. So he said, Sunday night. Bubbling up, Kimmy. The ancestors you came go. to me and worked on the meditation. Can you hear me? No, you bubbling up. Can't hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Come on. Okay. One second. Okay, let's get you. Can you hear me? No, you still, you still bubbling up. Thank you so much. Are you able to hear me now? I can hear okay, you. can you hear me? Yeah. Or I'll, I'll come back. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, now, um, thank you for all the powerful shares. Bird, thank you for clearing that up. But I, I do want to share something. Uh, he, I sent Keith a picture and I want him to share that of what my wife was talking about earlier. Keith, if you're able to share that now, She didn't mind us sharing it. Okay. That's a before and after picture. So the before picture was, that was what we were seeing, but we were projecting the after picture. And this was uh, after chemotherapy, after they said that it was a wrap, after all of those things uh, um, they uh, shared with us as to um, you know what was supposed to happen. So this is um, uh, power of the mind both ways. <laughs> so uh, the before picture you see with the glasses on is what the doctor put in her mental schema when she had our first child. He said, oh man, you, you're gonna get this uh, some years down the line. He put that in her subconscious mind and here's the manifestation of what he put in her mind and what she accepted. Then she had to actually shift or transmutate what she had in her head to arrive at the uh, other, other picture that you see her in the yellow top. 
Uh, so that right there affirms the, uh, uh, confirms the power of what the mind can actually do both ways. So um, I was surprised she uh, actually let me share this. So she for real, for real. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Keith. Back on. Thank you. How do I get back on what I had? Just share your screen. Just put the one there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Instructor Key. Cool. Cool. Thank you. All right. So let's um, move on here. Um, now, uh, I know I, I talk about um, visualization and um, visualization being very powerful in what it is that we put in the uh, penile gland. Here I show some pictures of uh, what that looks like in the part of the brain that's actually um, um, uh, really key and bringing that visualization uh, to bear. Could someone uh, read that part, to the, the bottom part of that for me, please? Visualization, see the new behavior in your mind's eye, pineal gland, for mm -hmm. 10 to 15 minutes a day. Vision boards are helpful sensory engagement pertinent. So uh, talk to me about what that means to you because I want you guys to be able to do this. Uh, to me, um, it's like you, you gearing your mind towards uh, what, you, what you want. So as, as, as for example, with the vision board, you locate pictures or drawings or whatever and then you locate those things and in that process while you're doing that it's it's being embedded into your mind you're thinking mm -hmm. about it um so uh and then you place it I, um some people place it out of sight and some people place it within sight so they can see it on a mm -hmm. daily basis okay now, some people place it out of sight, but tell me, Teresa, why would they place it out of sight? Um, if, I, if I think about the, <laughs> um, if you concentrate on it too much, it could cause uh, suffering. Mm. Uh, and um, like you have it in your mind, but you you just not overdoing it with the with the thinking about it. Oh, okay. Now I got something to say about that one, Teresa. <laughs> 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 let, let somebody else comment uh, before I say anything about that one. Um, it reminded me of that quote: "Is like you got to see something before you see something, or you will never see something." Like. Um, it was just a quote I used to hear all the time. Like, if you you got to see it before you see it, or you will never see it. So basically, like you got to put it into your mind before it's even coming to fruition, or you won't ever get it there. And so, like, I coach basketball. Um, I coach varsity basketball for girls, mm -hmm. and like my players, I always tell them like, when they shoot, I'm always like. You, you knew that shot wasn't going in before you took it because you didn't even believe it was going in. Like, you didn't even think about it. And you didn't even see the ball going into the basket. Like, it's like, almost like you, you, you just took the shot, like, just to throw the ball at the air. But, mm -hmm. like, I, I tell them when my coaches used to tell me, if you can't see yourself as a shooter, you can't shoot the ball. So, if you, yeah. and, and, and so that's how, like, you have to literally see yourself doing the action, see the action come into fruition, and then believe that you can do it. And then you have to have that confidence every time you take your shot. And that's like the same concept. Like you got to see it before you see it, or you won't, or it won't happen for you. 
Mm, yeah, that's 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 a powerful, powerful share, and that's where yeah, I would, uh, can I touch on that instruction? Yes, sir. You you sir, certainly can. Go ahead. Man, I um started visualizing my own catering service company about two years ago. I used to work at some of the best restaurants. I worked at Ruth Chris. I worked from Ruth Chris to Waffle House. So I done done it. I done cooked all kinds of ways. But I never felt as though I was treated the way I should have been treated. Even though I wasn't a head chef, I, I'm bad. I, I can I can get down with the best of them. I make a lamb bill that you, you know, you want to slap yourself about. But with the head chef, he, he, he hit his nose down at me. And I never did get the pay that I asked for when I was there. No well. So I started my own thing, but I visualized myself and I told my friend, and he actually laughed. I said, I'm going to have me a chain of food trucks all over America. They're going to sell quality cuisine and it's going to be fusion. You're going to have soul Asian, soul Mexican, and soul food quick on the food truck. I promise you, you can do it. He was like, what? Laughing at me all the way. So far, I got 15 dishes, a website, an Instagram, and this is my second year I've been in business. And one of my biggest sellers is my uh, Philly cheese egg rolls. And people was like, what? Philly cheese egg rolls? Man, I could put anything in an egg roll. I could put anything in the epinata. I, I got all kind of different stuff. And be like, what? Chicken and collard greens in an egg roll? Come on, bro. Stop playing. And when they eat it, they like, you stupid. Yeah, I know. I know. But I don't pat myself on the back. I let the food speak for itself. But I seen it in my mind. I still don't got my chain food truck yet. I'm working on my first food truck. But at this point, it's like really close. I just got my uh, first PPE. Uh, I'm finna trademark everything. Uh, and it's, it's it's really looking good. It's like, Ooh. it's really coming to, coming to pass. And I'm looking at food trucks right now as I speak. So it's, it's, it. it's, it's all in your mind and what you see for yourself. So you yeah. got to visualize it first. You got to. That's that's so powerful. It's so powerfully important. And Teresa, that's why I question uh, why would someone hide it? I'm going to share this with you um, uh, as a part of like a visualization uh, practice that I embrace myself. So uh, in me uh, working on my doctorate or you know completing my doctorate, what I did was I took a picture of an old picture of myself and I cut it out, right? Just a headshot. Then I put on the picture a doctorate robe along with the uh, doctorate beanie, the, the cap. And I put it on my bedboard, on, on my headboard. So every time before I went to sleep, I actually saw an image of myself in the graduation ceremony. So every time I went to sleep or was on my way to bed, I saw that image of myself. So I didn't hide it. <laughs> I actually put it on my headboard to where I, you know, Photoshop myself on my headboard. That's how personal I made the uh, charge for doctor to, to be. And I kept it on that headboard until it happened. <laughs> uh, so Teresa, I'm gonna challenge that you don't hide it. You put it where you see it before you go to bed, when you wake up in the morning. Uh, I'm gonna share a, a, uh, another uh, 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 share a story. So 
Um, I am a watch guy. I love watches, right? One of my favorite watches is of course Rolex, but the Rolex that I like is the uh, the Submariner that's uh, that has gold and stainless steel. So I was like, that's my favorite watch in the world. I want this watch, I want this watch, I want this watch, I want this watch. So I put a picture of the watch uh, on, the, um, on the mirror in the bathroom. So every time that I prepared to go to work, prepared to do anything, I would be looking at that picture of that Rolex, right? So, you know, I'd be looking at it every morning. You know, I'm getting myself ready. I'm looking at that picture and I would touch it, look at it every morning and then go to work. And I had it on there, I had it on there. And um, I think that later on that year, my wife surprised me with that watch on my birthday. I never knew <laughs> that she was planning to get that watch for me <laughs> because I not only saw it every morning, we shared bathrooms, she saw it every morning and it was actually working on her as well. <laughs> so, that watch. Way to go, instructor. Huh? The way to go, instructor. You're a yeah, smart man. Man, I, that's what I'm saying. Visualizations and those visualization boards are very, very powerful. Um, so uh, I say to you, Teresa, don't hide it. <laughs> Make them very plain <laughs> so you can see them either before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning. Um, that, that's, and, and have very strong emotions about what it is that you're seeing and looking at. That's why they have to be very personal because that's the sensory engagement that's pertinent to bringing it uh, into uh, reality. You understand, Teresa? Don't hide them. Yes, instructor. <laughs> instructor, if I, can, if I may. Yes, please. It's just something that's just um, um, in my soul right now. Um, that you, you keep using the word plain, P-L-A-I-N, <laughs> which brings me um, to my the studies of the scriptures I had back in the day. Uh, going to Habakkuk 2 and 2 um, of the King James Version. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables mm. that he may run he may run that readeth it. And the cross reference to that of Romans 15 and four, for everything that it was written in the past was written for our instruction so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. So I went into um, the, the word hope and did some, some cross reference from synonyms, expectation, aim, plan, or look forward to or look for. Mm -hmm. um you know and it just making reference to what you just said and I, I i said i made also um in terms of writing it and making it plain and making reference of a relation to visualization i wanted to i made reference of something that happened saturday in the dojo um in class on monday <laughs> and uh if i could talk about that just a little bit before yeah. it gets too late um so i broke two um, two inch board Saturday. And um, um, the first one was with a rear elbow around. And, and in breaking that one upon completion, upon the break, I felt no pain. I felt, I didn't even know I went through it until it was on the floor. Yes, and, sir. Um, 
that and and thinking about the visualization prior to breaking that board first i thought it was going to be a one inch board first of all you know just just and i knew in my mind i was going to go through the board you right. know it, so I, my, my my whole body knew i was going to go through the board and the whole process of of leading up to that in my mind i was practicing perfect mechan i was practicing my formula for power perfectly everything perfectly Everything was perfect. So when you put the board in front of me, I knew I was going to break it. It was no question in my mind because I was seeing in my mind, everything in my elbow around was perfect. I had the, the perfect synchronization, the perfect snap, the perfect base, the perfect mechanical conditioning. So I knew that board point of contact was perfect. I knew that board was going to break. Mm. Now, I, I also want to dive into the second board because the second board actually left me somewhat sore. Um, and this was, toward the end of, this was toward the end of the day. And you had told us to go into Santian breathing and visualize breaking this board. And it's interesting because through my visualization, I was not sure what I was going to break the board with. It was either going to be a thrust punch or a palm heel. And, be, and I think because of that, I did not properly visualize which which one I was going to do it with. I just I knew I was going to break the board, but I didn't know which one I was going to do it with. So mm -hmm. when I when I went to go break when I went to uh, strike the board with the palm heel, even though it broke, as I remember now, my my mechanics was was totally off. My the mechanics of the strike was totally off, which caused my wrist to flex as I made contact with the board. Now because my point of balance was right and my directional flow was right and my point of contact was right, the board broke, and because I knew the board was gonna break, the board was gonna break. However, because my, my visualization of me breaking the board was not perfect, was not written clear, was not written in a way where I could go back and I could read it and I could run with that, is, as you say, make it, it wasn't plain mm. um, and simple. I, I, I look now and I'm, even now I, I flex my wrist and I have some tightness in my wrist after breaking that board. I just and so I just wanted to 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 lay that out because it just it was just something that was in my soul and my spirit to be yes. said, you know. Um, and I appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you for sharing because that was that was powerful. Uh, you went through those boards. I, I would have never known that the the visualization on the second break was off because you popped that board so clean that it actually flew out of my hand. It was almost like it exploded. Uh, it actually flew out of my hand and it almost hit Kimmy in the head, the second part of that board. <laughs> so I remember it, I was like, woo, you know. Glad uh, my eyes is closed. <laughs> yeah, you know, fine. you probably would have got hit with it because it flew right out of my hand. I would have never known that there was uh, some, some visualization problems with that break because it broke so clean. Uh, but thank you for sharing, it's a powerful share. And it speaks to uh, how I like to push the envelope of visualization uh, as other instructors push the envelope of visualization with even bringing that practice of board breaking into actual floor practice. Uh, that was something, as instructor Aku would say, that's a New Testament venture <laughs> to where um, uh, we would actually bring the boards into the floor practice and challenge you to see it in your mind's eye first, and then now bring what you see in your mind's eye into reality. So again, we're always pushing that envelope. Teresa did it as well when she came up here. She went through two boards, uh, uh, one with the front kick and one with the, I think, elbow Teresa. Uh, the same thing. Uh, instructor who was pushing the envelope to see it in your mind's eye, see it in your mind's eye, now break it, now break it and keep it there. So uh, again, we are always pushing that envelope because we work, our primary work is with your mind. 90% of our work is with your mind. 
it, only 10% of it plays out on the floor. <laughs> so uh, that's why I offered the, the definition of what it is that we do at the top of this as us being social engineers, how we're changing the perception that you have of yourself, bringing it into self mastery. That's what we're doing actually. So uh, guys, thank you for your sharing. I wanna go on to the next one. Now it's your turn. I want you to now give you a few minutes to cre now create your own mantra based on what you've learned. Uh, based on what you've learned, uh, not using uh, negative words, not using the word not, <laughs> don't use the word try, uh, you know, uh, or all of those things. I want you to create at least three good ones and then share. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to do that. So I'm gonna set the clock here and I'm gonna actually give you let's say uh, four minutes. So go ahead, work on uh, creating three mantras and then uh, I'm gonna have you guys share. So think about it, four minutes. And you have a little over two minutes left. Okay, you have a little over a minute. Just three. Minute and twenty seconds.
All right. Can somebody share what they have come up with? <clears throat> and Shardonia came over too. Okay. Um, yes, yes, good. One of them is I am the hope, and the second is free is what I am. What's the first one again? I am the hope, and the second one is free is what I am. I am the hope, H-O-P. Um, hope, H-O-P-E. H-O-P-E, I'm sorry. And then the second one is what? Free is what I am. Free is what I am, okay. Now, uh, let me ask you a question about each one. Um, okay. Um, how is the first one personal for you? Um, <clears throat> because basically in my family, um, I came from a struggling family. Uh, my, my granny was off heroin. Um, my mom had me at 15. So I'm the first male to go to college. And um, a lot of people, I got a lot of cousins and stuff, they, they look up to me. You know, I, I inspired them. I'm the first one to travel overseas. Um, I live a free life. So I'm, I motivate a lot of people amongst my family and my community. Okay. So I, I give hope. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. What about the second one? Um, free is what I am. Um, that's personal to me because... I, I live a free life. Like whatever I, I, I want to do, I just do it. I don't I don't look back. I don't think about consequences. Um I just I just do whatever I want, whatever I feel the need to do. I, I try to live just a, a free, a free life. No, you live a free life. Don't try to live. You, you're, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I live a free life. Okay, I got you. All right, all right. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Okay. Somebody else. Okay, let me go next. Go ahead. I got you three of them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the first one is, I will make today better than yesterday. The second one is, I am powerful enough to face whatever comes. And the third one is, love, live, laugh, and enjoy every moment. Okay. Now, what makes the first one personal? The first one is personal. All of them are personal, but the first one is is personal because some days, like I wake up because I have had a lot of situations. I've made it through shootouts. I know a lot of my partners are in prison, just that and the other. Um, come from a uh, similar environment, you know, man, really bad situation. Um, and um, some days I get in my head and I, I fight myself about, you know, sending letters or accepting phone calls or even just dealing with certain people because I know how the energy is. So on certain days, I just I decide hey, today's going to be better than yesterday. I'm not going to deal with such certain things today. I'm not going to do certain things today because I didn't like the way it made me feel. I didn't like the way it made me act. I didn't like the way it, it, it put me in, in my mental space. So I, I try to, uh, I avoid, not try, I avoid anything that puts me in a bad headspace because it's really hard. It's easy to get in negative headspace, but it's really hard for me to get out of negative headspace. All right, so say, what's that mantra again, John? I will make today better than yesterday. Okay. All right. The second one is, I am powerful enough to face whatever comes. Okay. So what makes that personal? That's personal because I'm dealing with so many situations. Like I remember that setup you did with, with instructor Keith where you had uh commit kicking at him and different people punching at him and he stepped to the side. It's like I gotta see 
what's going on. My mother's sick. She got complications going on. My my daughter's out west going to school, but she got complications with her situation. And I'm dealing with my, my ex-wife and, and my new wife. I'm dealing with starting a new business. All of these things are coming at me, and I got to maintain. I got to stay prevalent. I got to stay I got to stay well. I got to stay on top of it. I got to stay healthy. I got to watch my, my, my medication. I got to watch what I eat. I got to watch how I maneuver. You see what I'm saying? So all of these things coming at me, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta face whatever come. I can't, can't say, no, I don't want to deal with life today. I'm not going to adult today. You can't, you can't hide in the fact that you don't want to do, you have to get up. You have to, you have to work. You have to grind. You have to move. Otherwise you'll be stagnant and you, you'll start to grow moss as my grandfather would say. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what's the third one, John? The the third one is is, is personal to me because I, I I actually died like for like six seconds when I had my heart attack, and I have to remind myself because I worked so hard and I've always been a hard worker. Like when I used to be driving commercial drive, uh, I I rode I drove Marta for almost t- ten years and I drove over the road for like seven eight. I worked eighteen hour days and all this and all that, and even now with the cooking I do a lot of work. I got to remind myself to, to stop. Smell the roses, love, live, laugh, and enjoy every second. Mm. Because tomorrow's not promising nobody. Right, right, right. Now, John, you asked. You, do you know why I asked those, those questions of you? Why, why, you know, what makes it personal? To get my thoughts. Why else? Based on what we talked about. Because well, when it was personal, you 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 you, you associate it with, with your mind's eye, and you, you can visualize it, and you bring it all in because it's connected to what you think. About. Yeah, uh, it's like Bird said: if it's not personal, if it's not personable to you, uh, it's like dinner eating in a dream. Right. Exactly. So it needs to elicit some type of strong emotion associated with it, uh, and. Uh, Again, the avoidance of negative words. It should be simple. Um, it shouldn't be too complicated. It should be plain, as uh, Theo uh, offered earlier, too. Uh, making it plain, making it uh, easy, making it simple. And it has to be personal. It has to elicit some type of emotion. So good, 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 good stuff. Just add one, one comment on what you said. Well, I can't hear you, John. John, that's, you got to speak me. up. That's me. That's me. Go ahead. Y'all was saying I want to add one comment to what uh, to what John said. Can you hear me? Uh, you got to speak up. I, 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 it's like you're far away, Keith. I said I want to add a comment to what John said. Go ahead. Is that better? That's a little better. Go ahead. Yeah, I was. I just want to add um, to John to make sure you keep an empowering context because a lot of what you said kind of sounds like uh, you are a victim of the circumstances. And a lot of what we deem as a lot is only a lot because of our focus. So, for example, when you're driving in the car, you don't say, Dang, I gotta go around this car. Dang, I gotta put my blinker on. Dang, I gotta make a turn. Dang, I gotta stop at a light. So you see, if you compartmentalize driving like that, it sounds like a lot, but you don't think about it like that because that's not the focus. You just drive. Or like when you walk, you don't know say, dang, I gotta pick up my foot. Dang, I gotta watch out for this track. Instructor. Yeah. I can barely hear you. It seems like the more you talk, the, the further you sound like you really far away. Is it your, your mic you need to adjust? Right, is it better? Is it better? Now that I can hear you. So say right, that, that that's, my, that's my Bluetooth. I said I wanted I wanted to add a, a comment to what John said because his commentary sounds like it's not an inside of an uh, empowering context. Okay. Go and so ahead. I'm saying that that a lot of what we deem as, you know, I have a lot going on or I have a lot of circumstances is because of what we focus on. So when you drive, you don't say, dang, I got to stop at a light. I got to make a left turn. I got to go around this car. I got to stop. I got to, you know, put it in drive. I got to go to speed limit. So you see, if you broke it down like that, 
if you focused on every individual piece of your drive, it would sound like a lot. Or when you walk, you don't say, oh yeah, I got to pick up my foot. I got to step over this crack. I got to, you know, maneuver around this person. You just walk because the focus is walking. The focus is not every individual piece of the walk or every individual piece of the drive. And it's also like that in life. So the more you can just live and not focus on every little individual thing to say, oh yeah, I got to do this and I got to do that. and I got to do that. It won't appear or occur to you as a lot, but it only occurs as a lot because you're focusing on every individual piece of everything that you have to do in life. So I just wanted to offer that and hopefully that helps you as well as other people um, to deal with, you know, the so-called circumstances that we have in life and not to minimize or negate anything that you're going through. Just saying, focus on the bigger picture and not all of the individual pieces. Hmm. So it makes me think about it. Thank you for that instructor. Thank you, instructor. That makes a lot of sense. It makes me think about um, focusing on what it is that you want and not the, uh, the details as to what it takes to get there. Or uh, like you said, uh, Instructor Keith, uh, putting it in context. So if you actually focus on what it is that you want or what reality is that you want to shift, it'll, uh, it'll be akin to just be and it is. Uh, as you're offering Instructor, just live. <laughs> and live powerfully <laughs> and live in power. And that's what will, that's what will actually manifest. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, that, that helps. Did that help John? Oh yes, it helped a lot. I, and, especially he, and both of y'all always help me a lot. Cause like I, I, I overthink a lot of things and I know that I don't know why, but I do. And I'm working on like I said, letting things go as far as, like I said, just live, letting thoughts go instead of feeding and wasting uh, a lot of time on stuff that may never happen. Yeah, yeah. Just like you uh, focusing on your food trucks, just focus on getting the trucks. Don't worry so much about how, just think about the trucks. And the how will actually come, that'll actually figure itself out. Your thoughts will actually, you know, manifest that. Because uh, uh, this is uh, putting it in context. Actually see the trucks. You got to see them first and not think about so much as how you're going to get them. <laughs> if that makes sense, John. Yes, sir. It, may, it makes it makes great sense. So we was just talking about visualizing and yeah. uh, putting everything together, being speaking in power. Yeah, you speak. You speak it as as if it has already happened. Speak it into existence as if it has already happened, as if it has already occurred. You look outside your window and you see all the trucks that you wanted there. You know what I'm saying. Don't yes, think, sir. Yes, know, sir. Don't think so much as, man, uh, I wonder who's going to give me a loan. I wonder, if I did, you know, you get into all of that, and that's going to ensue worry and apprehension and pessimism and all that kind of stuff. Just look out your window and see all them trucks <laughs> with your name and logo already on them. <laughs> and, and let the universe figure out the rest. It, it can definitely handle it. Uh, oh, man, I never thought, like I said, there's a lot of things I never thought I would be able to do that I've done. So I'm all, I'm all speaking into power and let it manifest itself. You're yeah. right. you absolutely. absolutely right. Thank you, sir. Anybody else want to share? Is this a wrap-up share instructor or is this still uh, pertaining to uh, affirmation. I mean, mantra. 
This is still pertaining to mantras. Is it something that you want to share? Not pertaining to the mantra, no, sir. Oh, okay, thank you. Anybody want to share mantras, please? I, I have uh, three. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Teresa. Um, I am successful in my endeavors. Okay. I grow. I grow tons of food in my garden. I practice positive mantras daily. Okay. Now, um, I got some some feedback on the first one, and what's the second one? I grow tons of food in my garden. Okay. Okay. And what's the third one? I practice positive mantras daily. Now, uh, talk to me about the first one. Um, the first one, I didn't know how to word it, but it's like I want to have a lot of money. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I didn't know how to say it where... Um, how much money you want, Teresa? Um, enough to retire on, probably um, like two hundred thousand a year. Okay, all right. So why not say that? Because I didn't know if it was too much. To, and that's, to that's it. But that's okay. limited right there. Yes, see, I'm glad you're sharing and this power <laughs> in you sharing this because, you know, part of the collaboration is to help you formulate a good mantra. So for those of you who are listening, it, if you have some reservations about it, please share. So, um, Teresa, if you want to manifest 200,000 a year, make that your mantra. <laughs> Be very specific about the amount, you know what I'm saying? And make that your mantra because the word endeavor means attempt, means to try. That's a cute way okay. of saying try. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? So you say endeavors. And then it's indirect because the direct thing that you wanted to say was, I want to generate $200,000 per year, <laughs> period. That's what you want. So claim it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Actual- You want to generate $200,000 a year. <laughs> $200,000 a year and feel a certain kind of way about it. You know what I'm saying? That, I'm that, that has to be strong feeling about what it is that you're saying. Uh, if this is going to be the basis of retirement, there's strong feeling about that because you don't want to have to work, right? right. So $200,000 is going to be generated by you not working yeah. right so um again that is in fact possible there are people that are actually doing that mm -hmm. so uh uh claim it there are people doing that and more so yeah. don't be afraid or think it's too much <laughs> what's too much for the universe right <laughs> You know, what's too much? You know, like you said, that thought in and of itself is limiting. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Teresa. And I, and I hope this is helping. And those that are listening, please, when you're formulating these mantras, you have to be very, you know, deliberate and careful about what it is that you're formulating. So just like we uh, helped John, just like uh, Teresa offered one, if you're not sure, share. 
Anybody else? I'll share. Okay, please. Okay, um, I have one so far. I'm working on my second and uh, well, I start on my first one. Um, I am a powerful woman and I walk, think, speak, love and create in total confidence. I am a powerful woman. Okay, but what are, what are the feelings associated with this? This mantra. Well, um, <sighs> okay, um, I want to stay positive on it. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I've been given, I was born with a lot of gifts as far as uh, creatively. Yes. And um, in this lifetime, I wanna see them all come uh, into fruition. Right now, one of the gifts I've given 100% of my uh, time to. Mm -hmm. And um, I have uh, quite a few. I make jewelry. I make skincare, um, uh, different things, and I make it effort effortlessly. Mm -hmm. And um, even when I speak to people about it, as I sell it or um, express it to other people or anybody else see or experience my services or my products or anything like that they do hang on every word and um i know i have that gift mm -hmm. um i want to express that in other interests and other things that i have uh that i'm involved in or want to be involved in mm -hmm. so uh with the walking and speaking um that's one of the things that uh i'm in a process of healing and um giving love to spending yeah. more time on that so yeah. uh yeah um the other one um it's not complete because I was still thinking I want to be intentional with it. Uh, I'm okay. obedient to the messages that I receive through meditation, my spirit guides, instructors, and um, I, I left it there. I'm still working on that. So. Okay. And the only thing that I would offer there is to, as in the previous slides, allow it to be uh simple simplify it as much as you can <laughs> okay as much as you can because if it's too long or it's too complicated mm -hmm. uh subconscious remember you're talking to a seven-year-old <laughs> mm -hmm. okay Thank you know you. what i'm saying so keep that in mind you're giving this message to a seven-year-old child so that child has to be able to say, oh, this is what you want <laughs> and be able to do, do exactly what it is that you're asking it to. That's the mm -hmm. only thing that I would offer there in your formulation of the second one. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you guys for sharing that. Uh, if, if no one else has to share, I want to I want to move on. I want I'm going to go a little bit over time because I'm three minutes over, but I want to finish this actual presentation uh, because I don't want to take it into another um, um, uh, a day. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just about close to finishing up here, 
and I want to finish, and this is the, the, this is the pivotal part. So I'm only gonna take a few more minutes here. And so if no one else has to share, I just want to move uh, on just a little bit. Did anyone else have to share? I'm not rushing or anything. I'm just uh, asking for a little bit more time to complete this particular presentation. Anybody else want to share? I'll share. Please. I am healed and getting stronger every day. Okay. I am centered, grounded, and focused, and I am walking in my purpose. Okay, so I'm gonna say something to you about the first one. Say that one again. I am healed and I'm getting stronger every day. Now, when, now what did we talk about when we use the word stronger or strong in formulating an, uh, a mantra? What are you asking the universe when you say you're getting stronger every day? I don't think I was here for that. For uh, okay. So how, do you, how does one realize strength? By getting more challenges and stuff. Yep, challenges and resistance. That's how you realize strength. So when you ask the universe, to get stronger every day, you're in fact asking for resistance or some type of challenge so that you can realize your strength. Is that what you want? No. Okay. So if I were you, I would remove that terminology stronger because that's what the universe is going to bring you in order to realize your strength. When somebody is stronger or wants to get stronger every day, you're asking for increased challenges, increased resistance, increased weight every day. So what would you say I should uh, change that to instructor? Say the, say the, affirm say the uh, mantra again. I am healed and I'm getting stronger every day. Okay. Let's break that up to uh, two. I am becoming more powerful every day. I am more powerful every day. Okay. Okay. And instead of saying I am healed past tense, I am healthy. I am perfect. I am healthy or I am perfect health. Thank you, instructor. You're very welcome. Yeah. So that way it's not in the past tense. You're speaking it in present. I am healthy. <laughs> or I am in perfect health. Or I am perfect health. You're claiming it now. It's not in past tense. <laughs> you know. Uh, so put it in the present tense and claim it as now. Um, I am powerful every day. I am becoming more powerful every day, or I am powerful every day, or I am living in power every day. Uh, avoid using the word strong or stronger. Uh, you're asking the universe to give you resistance to realize your strength. Thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you for sharing. Because see, when you guys share, <laughs> Other people could be thinking the same thing and think that that's a good mantra. But there are actually better mantras for you to embrace that will help you uh, change your reality and live in a more powerful reality. So thank you for sharing that. 
Anybody else? I have two um, that I would like to share. Please share. Uh, one, uh -oh, it disappeared. One is uh, I have the physical space to grow my business. Mm -hmm. And the second one is I speak with power. And that's what I have. Space to grow your business. Okay. So how do you feel about that first one? Um, I feel, you know, positive about it. It definitely takes me into a space where I'm seeing myself in the space and working in it. So um, that one feels personal, like I can wear that one okay. for sure. So now let me challenge that just a little, just a little bit. Okay. Uh, when you say, I have the, say that first one again. Uh, I have the physical space to grow my business. I have. Now, when you say physical space, mm -hmm. do you realize that that is limiting you to a, 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 a geographic location? Or, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, there are millions mm -hmm. of businesses that are virtual, <laughs> right? Uh, to where uh, they go beyond the physical space or the physical construct, right? So yeah. when you say, I have the physical space, you are actually limiting yourself to a specific geographic, you know, location or determination. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I hear you. So, uh, you might want to change that if that's not your intent. I hear you. Okay. Okay, so that, that's the only thing that I have there when you say, I have the physical space, which means that you are limiting yourself to, you know, physicality. Okay. Got it. What's the second one? Uh, the second one was, uh, I speak with power. I speak with power. Okay, how do you feel about that one? I feel okay about it. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Cool. That's that that's a good one. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, instructor. Okay. Anybody else? And by the way, these are some excellent shares. I'm sure that they're helping other people. Um, when you share, you are helping each other grow in this. And this is this, this this has the power to shift your reality forever. So thank you guys for sharing. Anybody else? All right, we can move on. So when you say kingdom, what is the kingdom in reference to? Right? And this is what I'm offering going back to the formation of um, 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 uh, your mantras and what it is that a good mantra allows you to manifest. There are two words in kingdom, one that governs king, a ruler, dome is the head, which is the you know, the, the blending of both of the words kingdom or kingdom, the ruling organ, it rests in the dome, uh, the head, it is the kingdom. Thine kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Matthew 6.10. So that prayer is actually uh, has to do with the practice of uh, manifestation, uh, what uh, I'm offering here uh, with the uh, blending of those two words, we, uh, those who say this prayer or recite this prayer, uh, oftentimes are not even aware of what it is that they are reciting or what they are saying uh, to themselves about this particular part of the brain, the reticular activating system, which is, I, I have a picture of it here. 
Um, so when you're saying that that's what you're doing, you're actually um, um, in realization of what that part of the brain can actually do. Um, now here are some other references to uh, where. Uh, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. Um, um, uh, John uh, 14, 2. Um, and another, uh, um, when it refers to uh, mansions in your father's house, the house is actually this reticular activating system that rests in the kingdom your head, the kingdom. Uh, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. In my father's house, there are many possibilities, many mansions, riches. As Kenya said that she has a lot of talents that she wants to manifest on this plane. Uh, each of those possibilities lend themselves to mansions. Uh, Kenya, uh, what you're suggesting there, you say, I have many talents. I do jewelry. I can make a house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there are a lot of things that you are doing, Queen, uh, that can lend itself to the making and the building of mansions. Um, the second one. When thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thine father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, will reward thee openly. This is the practice of uh, uh, meditation. <laughs> Going into the closet of your mind, <laughs> uh, praying in secret, uh, uh, formulating that mantra. <laughs> in secret and being rewarded openly uh, for it. Um, come my people, enter your chambers and shut the door behind you. Hide yourself for a little while until the fury has passed by. Um, again, the chamber, this part of your mind, the reticular activating system is also referred to, our ancestor was referred to this part of the brain as a chamber. And they even constructed pyramids to um, uh, duplicate it. So if you look at the constructions of pyramids, the pyramids are formulated or structured uh, as the, this part of the brain is structured. Uh, so it's saying enter into your chambers and shut the door behind you. Uh, that is, uh, meditations in the wee hours of the morning or just before you go to sleep when it's just you in that part of the mind connecting to universal consciousness um, which is what i'm referencing here uh, any questions about any of these yes i have a question about that last one Yes, go ahead, sir. My question is, when they're talking about uh, close the door behind you, is that like dead or like meditation? Like, oh, I really need to think and get outside of my head for these 30 minutes or 20 minutes. I ever know you meditate. Yeah. Now, when it says shut the door behind you, it just means that this is a private moment where you're meditating and there's a certain reality that you are manifesting at that particular time. Okay. That's so, just a um, saying that you're doing it in private. You're doing it in the uh, constructs of your mind's eye. You're doing it inside the penile gland, which no one can go into but you and the father. No one dwells there but you and the Father. So you go into that chamber and shut the door behind you. Okay, this way, this way to my hide yourself. So you just your one on one talk with God or whatever. Your yes. your your piano gland. Yes, that that subconscious part of your mind, mm. which is connected to the universal consciousness. Okay. Yeah. 
-hmm. Good question. Any other questions about these? Okay, thank you. Now, um, I'm offering some more here. I remember uh, I had offered uh, this before and I said this part of the brain, our ancestors called it the eye of raw and I was gonna show you a picture of it. And this is the picture of it. And here are the, uh, uh, the verses that are associated with it. Knocking on the door of the temple, the size of your head where the sacred gland sits, the temple, um, uh, uh, as the sides of your head are called and referred to as temples, they are referred to as temples for a reason. This is considered the doorway to God within. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. Apocalypse 320, ask and it will be given unto you, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door will be open. Matthew 7, 7. Jesus, the light of the world stands at the door which is overgrown with ivy and weeds. These are the questions of the life of uh, Nikki Gumbel, where, where he offers here that um, it's overgrown with ivy and weeds because people don't realize that this is the door. This is the gateway to all that is. Uh, uh, those looking outside of themselves for answers. And uh, the answers sit uh, right in the temple. <laughs> All of the answers rest in the temple uh, where the sacred gland sits. So uh, these are um, um, uh, passages that I found in other books that uh, reference that, that penile gland and that reticular activating system. Um, so that's why I like to draw references from other books. Uh, and I was able to uh, locate other books that uh, like uh, confirm each other. Any questions about this particular uh, slide? Because I, I wanted to make a key point in showing you this. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is uh, the conclusion. And I, I, I didn't mean to rush, but I just wanted to, to, to get to uh, this. And, I, and I'm concluding here. Uh, could someone read this particular slide for me, please? Prince warned us that there are thieves in the temple and we didn't know what, hold on, let me make this smaller for you. Okay. Prince warned us that there are thieves in the temple and we didn't know what he was talking about. Thieves who are robbing us all of the knowledge of ourselves. Love come quick. Love help me be the better man, better than the thieves. Involutionary change. Can we drive the money changes out of the temple? Yeah. And that was the question that I wanted to kind of like leave you on because uh, this is one of my favorite artists. And uh, just in uh, doing this research and, and stumbling upon this and talking about temples, I was uh, thinking and challenged by. Uh, well, this song just act, just came to me and I looked up the lyrics of the song and uh, I was and I read it and uh, played it and I was like, damn, he's actually talking about this. <laughs> um, uh, uh, the media 
Uh, as you know, you know, he had a war, you know, he was going to war with uh, 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 the media executives or the uh, uh, record executives taking his image and his name from him and then he changed his name to a symbol. Uh, the man was a genius. <laughs> and then, you know, he uh, made this song uh, alluding to the thieves that were in the temple and that we allowed to come in the, the temple. And uh, as one of these slides indicated that uh, Jesus chased um, the thieves or the money changers out of the temple. And this involutionary process that uh, is being offered here in this particular presentation is your opportunity to chase the thieves or the money changers out of the temple of your minds. So uh, again, thank you guys for uh, listening to the series that uh, put together for you guys. I hope this helped you. Um, if you have any questions uh, when you're formulating your mantras or meditation, you can ask myself or any one of us uh, are, are able to, to help you with this. Uh, this will in fact change your reality forever. So uh, that concludes uh, this presentation. Uh, you, if you have any questions for me, or any uh, closing comments uh, from uh, the instructors or from anyone, uh, please do so uh, now. And um, hey, that, that concludes it. I wanted to finish it today. So thank you for hanging out with me and going over. I didn't want to take it into another day. Kimmy, you had a question? Had your hand up? Yes, I wanted to share what I was uh, attempting to share earlier. Go ahead. Um, so this was Paul's sentiments and I was just uh, sharing for him. Okay, go ahead. He said, Sunday night, my ancestors came to me and worked on me. Yesterday during the morning, it was very, very bleak. Like it didn't feel like I was gonna make it. I asked out loud for the ancestors to come do their thing on, through and in me. I started speaking affirmative mantras. I am healed, I am healthy. My lungs are strong and clear. Last night I was asleep and then I had a flood of thoughts and then acid reflux kicked in making it impossible to sleep. I felt the ancestors near me. I immediately relaxed and felt them literally going inside of my body and working on certain areas. They directed me where to press on my body. My stomach began to gurgle and the acid reflux settled. The ancestors told me to drink water. So I drank and drank and drank. When I thought I had enough, the cup sitting on my nightstand started tapping. I didn't even think twice about it. I just obeyed what the ancestor was telling me and drank more, LOL. It was my great, great, great grandmother. They called Ma, or yeah, I think <laughs> I think that's, it's M-U-H. So if I butchered it, I apologize. Her name was Rose Martin, but she was squatting down looking to a big bowl of liquid. Some of the other ancestors didn't look like people. They were entities, forms, energies, but they were there. This is the first time I ever called on my ancestors. I'm, late, I'm lightweight embarrassed for saying that. And that was uh, what he shared. Wow, it's a powerful share. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad he's in better health. I'm glad that uh, uh, that actually happened with him. Uh, to share some uh, a similar experience happened to me. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Kim. Any other comments, questions, concerns, thoughts? Instructor. Yes. May I? Yes, please. Uh, two things. Can I read that scripture, that last scripture on this last slide? Go ahead. It's, it's one of my absolute favorites. Uh, the cleansing of the temple, Matthew 21 and 12. Then Yahshua entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Mm. Uh, 
I just absolutely love, love, love that scripture because they misrepresent Yahshua as this soft guy in many instances. And he was far from it. He was a, a, a soldier warrior type spirit of the yes. lineage of David. And he rolled with a band of 12 brothers uh, and they went from ghetto to ghetto with money and goods, with knowing that the government, the powers that be, the police, the Sadducees, the, they all hated them, but they mm -hmm. moved without fear. Yes. And, 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 and skilled to the point that one of the brothers took a, a man's ear off his head with his blade, with the sword. And if he took his ear off his head, he could take his hood, head off his shoulders. So it's just really important that we know that as saints, as the chosen, as the elect of the most high, we ought to work and move in power and not in fear and, and, and do away with the misconceptions of the marker of the last age as being one that was soft and weak, that you could do anything to smack me on one side, I'm gonna turn another cheek and let you smack that one too. So that, mm -hmm. that right there is just a big deal because for a man to go in a temple where, where, where guys getting their money up at and going there by himself and nut up and flip their tables over and run them up out of there, you know he had the power of God in him. And when they looked on him, they got out of his way. So that's just <laughs> a, a yes, real they did. <laughs> for me. Yes, sir. Uh, and then quickly, <clears throat> just in relationship to the whole series instructor, uh, you know, I'm really full, man. I'm going I'm to limit my words, but the testimony of you and your wife, and I'm so thankful that Sister Denise came in and shared today uh, as your brother being able to, you know, walk with you from our side of the equation, you know, obviously not knowing the inner workings of the equation, but just that which we shared as brothers and supporting and, and, and honoring you and, and watching you model husbandry. Uh, and this is me to you, brother, to, to see and hear the testimony from your better half and from your daughter and to hear her speak uncompromisingly in, uh, in a spirit and in the power of a will that would not submit to the false uh, analogy or the false analysis of the, the, the practicing doctors uh, to cap it with the before and after pictures. Uh, it just really, really stirred me. Uh, and I just want to thank the most high for you both and just give the creator praise and your will and your intention and your thank love, you. the power of love and the power of collective focus and family, you know, and the union of man and woman being one brother and sister, I just, I just want to commend you and just praise our creator for blessing and keeping y'all. Um, and then beyond that, brother, I, the, the, the series was powerful. It really put a bright spotlight for me to see areas that I am and will improve in with regard to visualization, with regard to uh, structuring my thoughts and, and speaking to self and speaking to that seven-year-old to program my behavior. Uh, and I will continue to grow in consistency because I start many things and I, I had affirmations I was saying every day to a point I had it memorized and umpteen months later, I, I need to find the paper to, to revisit it. But just bringing this information because the metaphysics is about shaping our reality. Yes. And programming, tapping into the divine mind, tapping into the source and, and, and programming the subconscious, superconscious mind so that we bring into manifestation that which we desire. And uh, so, bro, I just, I just thank you. I appreciate you. And I will do better uh, based on this. This has been life changing. And uh, I just ask that you continue to go, bro, continue to blaze the trail and, and pull your brothers along and um, continue to model leadership. So I appreciate you. I love you. Oh, uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, Denise actually surprised me today. I, I did not expect that at all. So it was actually a, a pleasant surprise, her and my daughter. So thank you. Any others, comments, thoughts, 
Anything. <clears throat> I just wanted to say um, thank you so much, uh, instructor, Dr. Vaughn. This uh, entire series has been excellent. Um, I really appreciate how you went through the series um, using correlations to common place things such as music or other media or literature or even the Bible um, and the brain and how you wrapped it up tonight with this final, uh, these final ones um, in the correlation to the mini mansions in the brain. I, I mean, pardon me, mini mansions in the house mm -hmm. that just that just sent chills through me. Um, that just was amazing, um, and or is amazing. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. This has been really, really wonderful. I'm looking forward to going back through it as well. Thank you, Queen. Thank you. For that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Peace. Kimmy. Kimmy. That was a uh that was an accident, but um since we're here, I will say that I really appreciate this uh series. Um I I was able to take so much out of it that I didn't realize that I was doing myself and with being um, on the floor as well, like it's just all coming together. Like the conversation that we had last Saturday about um, when we were doing the breathing and then we were done and we were sharing and you were letting me know like, yeah, you you got the breathing, you're, you're getting the breathing that, that you need to get in order to do what you need to do. But then when it's time, you pull back mm -hmm. and, and yeah. it's like, I don't never visualize what I should, I don't never visualize it in my mind or um, it's, it's that in the back of the mind fear type thing. Um, it's but like, and it resonated with me too, because I said like, when I get this green belt, I'm going to be the senior. It was no question about it. It was, I wasn't even concerned with the bill. I wanted to be the senior of the class and I don't know why, but it was just really, really important to me. Um, maybe because I've spent m m more than half of my life in this discipline that it really just meant a whole, whole lot to me. So <clears throat> it was no question about what I wanted out of the test what I wanted to get from it what I how I wanted to grow in the test and it showed up on the floor and yeah. um I can see now and I realize from the series that I don't carry that with me every day and that's a problem like I have to do some digging I have to uh transmutate in order for me to grow how I should be growing and um, get better. And this um, series has really opened that up a lot for me. And um, it's also, you know, gonna show how much I'm taking from it with how I move through life and on the floor. So there's so many ways that I can see if I'm actually taking it and applying it. And so being that I know what to do now, um, it will be easier for me to take it and apply it. And I'll know when I'm not and when I am. So, cause before it was like, I didn't realize if I was being my own detriment, but now I'm able to realize that. So I really, really appreciate the series. And I um, really appreciated your wife being on, just like instructor Aku said, um, her share was just so powerful to me. and. Uh, what I, the things that I've been getting the last few weeks is just all coming together. Like I realized this is exactly what I need, the information that I've been getting and for her to even surprise you to be on, it was, it, it was exactly what I needed. I felt like and what everybody else needed. So I really just appreciate everything all together. And um, 
I appreciate your time and dedication. And uh, even if you had to, you know, stretch it so we can get it, I appreciate that as well. So thank you so much, Instructor Dr. Ryan. Oh, thank you, Queen. I appreciate you. I really do. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, if there is nothing else, I've, I've kept you longer than, um, than, I, than I anticipated keeping you, but I'm glad that you guys had the patience with me, uh, my wife joining on and uh, her shares. Was, like I said, was surprising to me. I didn't expect her to be on and then share. So I appreciated that and I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of all of you because uh, if it were not for you, uh, the thoughts to even come up with formulating this wouldn't have even happened. So again, uh, students like yourselves actually tell us as instructor Keith has said so many times has uh, it instructs us what to do, what you need. You let us know what you need uh, just by sharing, just the interactions on the floor, uh, uh, which led to now formulating this the series of, you know, in our thoughts, what can we put together to make us all better people, to make us all uh, uh, live in the power of that Godship, that we are all um, sons and daughters of the Most High. So again, thank you uh, for uh, just uh, uh, pushing us. And thank you instructors for uh, uh, pushing the envelope. <laughs> all of the presentations before this one actually led to uh, making me dig even deeper <laughs> uh, to make sure that uh, I brought together uh, what spirit uh, demanded uh, and what your spirits uh, demanded. So uh, again, thank you. Appreciate you guys. Have a good night and uh, formulate those mantras take time, please take time formulating them. Uh, and if, if you're not sure, just ask. You can ask. Good night, instructor. Good night. Thank you. Hey, instructor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here when instructor said, <laughs> just to let you know, man. Okay. Beautiful work, man. Uh, what a wonderful life, man. I'm just going to just say that, man. This is... <laughs> 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 what a wonderful life, man. I mean, uh, here in the in the flesh and beyond, man. That's all I'm going to say, man. You know, but thank you, instructor. Beautiful work. <laughs> thank you, instructor, Dr. Bong. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate thank you. Peace. Peace. Peace.